It's a ritual. I have to go through it. I knew you'd be. I knew. I knew you'd be uh, uh, dancing. I've got a new microphone, Graham. I've got a new microphone, so I'm going to bring it over. Oh, flashy! Flashy, folks. Well, I got it cheap on eBay. I'm not going to lie. I got it much cheaper on eBay. It was a forty quid microphone. I found it an open box, but unused on eBay. Twenty five pounds. No, nice. so I got it. <laughs> <Fantastic>. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, good afternoon, folks. How are you doing out there? I hope everybody's well. I need to just flick across me, have me comments on to make sure. If you are out there watching, listening, or just generally paying attention to us, then drop us a comment, whether you're on Facebook or YouTube. We can see them. It will be great to, to see you, to answer your questions, just to say hi, if that's what you want to do. Is uh, I am here with my, my good friend, my soon-to-be master coach, and... Awesome, generally awesome all round bloke, Cuddy. The I think about it. I'm, I'm thinking about it. Hang on, see, I've used legend a couple of times. I feel like legend doesn't really really cover it. I, Cuddy I feel... the King Cudworth. Oh, royalty, give me a royalty. royalty. Uh, well, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for having me on the show. Seeing as it's our show, I'm really grateful to be here. <laughs> I didn't think I was going to be here because I've had COVID all week. So I have, I'm just about getting my voice back because it was, to be honest, for me, it was like a heavy cold. I'm not going to lie. It was like a heavy cold. Um, so I've just been getting over COVID. So I'm, I'm very grateful to be here. Um, just what a great show title. But before we go into the great show title, I want to say it's a pleasure uh, to be working alongside my mentor, the man, the one, the only, there is only one because I Googled it. Graham Nichols, everybody. Graham Nichols. You, you clearly didn't Google it that well because there is another Graham Nichols. He's a spiritualist. <laughs> Believe me, I've checked. Oh, is he? Yeah, he is. Absolutely. When I wanted, when I wanted GrahamNichols.com, I went to get it and he'd already got it. The, the bleeping, bleeping, bleep, bleep. Um, so, yeah, apparently there's a Graham Nichols who's a spiritualist as well. But that's not me, folks. I promise. Uh, so, anyway, it's a pleasure to be here, as it always is. Um, and we're going to talk to you about today. Um, you can see it scrolling across the bottom of the... Uh, the screen what, what to, to do, do when you th when you think life is completely shit or also you know what to do when life turns to shit and that happens for all of us doesn't it it point. does but life just falls apart and turns to complete and utter shit let's be honest about it i know we shouldn't swear on the radio and i promise that's the only swear word we're going to well i'm going to use so i don't know about it's in the show title it is in the show yeah, title it is in the show title um so you know for, for everybody at some point life turns to complete and utter shit and for some people it does it on a constant basis some people they, their life seems to turn that way you know every day or once a week or something along those lines but right the question is, can we do anything about it cuddy can we do anything about it yes because and look, this goes out to, to everyone that's struggling right now. You have total empathy and sympathy. Um, I, I still have bad days. There's nothing that makes any of, of what we do safe in this economic uh, landscape that we're in. I, I said we weren't really going to talk about politics, but just to skim it, if you were to watch the TV and the news right now and a lot of the social media lines, there's nothing to be positive about. There's nothing. If it's the bill rise, the uh, fact that, that there's war in the Ukraine, our thoughts go out to everyone in Ukraine, obviously, in Russia. But there's more to life than what we're being fed. There's more to life than that. It's not all doom and gloom. It's not as bad as what we think. I don't think it is. I, I mean that, Graham. I genuinely don't think life is as constantly as shit as we like to make it out. However, as sure as you have, I've been in those places where you just wake up thinking, all right, I've read the books, right? I'm going to make sure that today I'm I'm the one who's in charge. I'm in charge. And then by 9.30 in the morning, I'm like, nah, something's wound me up. <laughs> it's another shit day. And my expectations were too high. And that was that was where I found out I was going wrong. My expectations were too high, Graham. They were too high of everybody around me. Because I thought, well, I care so much. Everybody else should care as much as I do. Guess what? That's not going to work. And my expectations of myself were far too low. Because I didn't realize how much I could do or how much I could have got better. So the quick tip, straight into it, lower your expectations. And raise your expectations of yourself. That is a that is a that is a cuddyism. That's something that I live by, 
And I want to share that with absolutely everybody uh, that is tuning on this one. Lower your expectations of the day and be surprised how much of a fun day it is when you get to the end of it. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. And, you know, just like you, I've been in those places where I wake up in the morning and you think, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, today's going to be a better day. Today's going to be a good day. And then you walk downstairs and you trip over something your kids are left or your dog's left or, you know, or, the, you know, the, something happens and all we go, that's it. It's a it's a shit day. And, you know, I these days I, I pull my daughter up sometimes because she'll say, oh, that's great. That's happened. It's just going to be one of those days. And I'm like, hang on a minute. Just one thing happening to you does not create one of those days unless you let it. You know, you walking downstairs and dropping something and it smashes to the floor might seem like in that moment that it's a horrible thing. But that doesn't mean the rest of the day is going to be like that. It's all about absolutely, as you say, raising the expectation to yourself. What can you do in that moment to get past that, clean it all up, and then move on with life? If you yeah. let it, that smashing that thing on the floor, as the example, could ruin your entire day. Or it could just be the next five minutes when you clean it up and then you just get on with the day. And that's about your mindset, right? And I'm, you know, I'm talking to the, the, the UK's number one mind management coach, so I know <laughs> you're going to have the, the right answer for this. It's all about your mindset, right? It's, it is about mindset, but it's also about understanding what what you are in control of. And look, the, one of the biggest things that I've noticed, not look, I'll even say close close to home is, um, when I say close to home, I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean my wife. I'll, I'll even say it. I'll even mean my <laughs> wife. We get stuck, and I used to do this as well, but we used to, we get stuck in trying to control the things that we can't control and realizing, not realizing we actually can't control any of that. But if you're constantly trying to control something you cannot control, how do you think your life's going to turn out? Frustrated? <laughs> Shit. Well, to, ha, ha, it, it's because you're trying to control the wrong things. You're forgetting what you can control and what you can't control. And I think for anybody that's listening right now, if you're sat there thinking, well, it's all right, Cuddy and Graham, I, look, they don't know nothing. If they're sitting on a radio show. They know absolutely nothing. Right. To anyone that is listening, write down a list of everything that has bothered you, that's made your day shit. Write down a list. Might be one thing, might be 17 things. Then tick off, cross them out, the ones that you cannot control. You actually have no control over. Put a line through them, and I bet your list is a lot smaller. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I'll use the example from my life. When, you know, 20-odd years ago, when I was diagnosed with uh, depression, stress, and anxiety all at the same time. When when I was in that doctor's room and, and she was telling me that and, and then giving me a prescription for meds, I remember sitting there thinking, well, how am I supposed to deal with this when, you know, work is like this or that person is like this or my boss is being this or, you know, whatever it may be. I remember reading off this big long list about all these things that were wrong with my life. And actually when I look at, if I was to look at that list now, I would imagine of the 10 or 12 things that I could control, not one of them was in my control. Because the only thing I could control at the time, if I'd have known that I could control it, was what I thought up there and how I felt in there. And that's it. And because all I blamed it, and it was, it was a blame game of all on all of these things, you know. Somebody is, you know, a couple of months ago, somebody had broken into my house at that time. Somebody had broken into yeah. my house. You know, uh, work was being awful. My boss had told me that I should, you know, even if it took me working 24 or 36 hour shifts, that I should be doing that. That was crap, but still not in my control, as in him telling me that. Work was just terrible. I was, you know, feeling crap about life in general. Those are things, that, the main things there, I can't, I couldn't control. But I blamed everything and everybody else for how I was feeling. And if I'm going to blame anybody for how I'm feeling, the only person I've got to blame is the bloke I look in the mirror at every single morning. But at the time, I didn't see that. And that was, nope. you know, that's exactly what put me in that state of stress, anxiety, and depression, because I was trying to control stuff that I just wasn't in control of. Absolutely. It's it's kind of like, uh, and look, some of the words that I, I hear a lot these days is, oh, I feel I'm completely overwhelmed, and there's too much going on, and... I, I, why am I feeling so bad when we know we can't control all those kind of things? Well, there's what can you control? I always look back at 
so look, and we and Graham, you know my story. You know full well uh, it's been a shocking two years for me, <laughs> and I'm still still smiling. <laughs> and you know I've gone through the absolute ringer for the past two okay. years uh, while I've been building this new, new business and everything like that. And it's it's genuinely been like the amount of people that have come up to say, "Well, how how is it you've gone through losing all everything that you've lost, and you're still here bobbing and weaving, smiling." And it's not always been uh, blissful. Why is it you're still happy and smiling? So because all I've ever done for the past two years, while everything's been going wrong, is I've been looking for the solutions. I've not been looking at the problem. I know what the problem is. I know I know, we all know what the problem is. If you keep looking at the problem, you, you're going to keep getting problems. So I genuinely, and that's mindset, and that is something that I've absolutely instilled into myself completely instilled into myself is mindset and that is i looked at solutions 100 percent for the past two years it's been solutions you you know that graham anyway we were just talking about that before we came on so yes i can honestly say that life has been not as much fun as it has been for me in the past but i just kept looking for the solutions we know what the problems are but if you keep looking at the problems you're going to get more problems so i started looking at the solutions and for anyone that's definitely, like, what do we do when we think life is constantly shit? Turn the TV off. Turn your social media feed off. Unless you've got, or on an Instagram, unless you're following positive, motivational people, do not watch the news. Turn off the news. Turn off the lies that we keep getting told on a daily basis and just do you. You might be surprised how you, actually life is not as much shit as it is. Yeah, absolutely. And what you said there really resonated with me because there's one thing that I tell my clients, and that is 100% guaranteed that the answer to your problems, the solution to your problems is never in the problem itself. 100% guaranteed the solution to your problem is never in the problem itself. Because if you keep staring at that problem, as you said, Cuddy, that problem is what you're going to get. And that's you're going to take over your entire life. It's going to be what you experience because what you pay attention to, that's what comes true in your life. So if you are paying attention to a problem, that's what you're going to get in your life. However, if you do what you do and what you've done over the last two years and think, OK, I've got this problem, but I'm going to focus on whatever the solution is. Guess what you're going to find? You're going to find the solution, which you have. And you've turned it around and you've mm -hmm. built this business. And, you know, I'm not, you know, we have a bit of a laugh about it, but I truly believe you are the UK's number one mind management coach. You know, we, <laughs> we do have a laugh about it. That's what yes. you feel for yourself. Yes. Because you were focusing on the solution and not yes. on the problem. If you focused on the problem of, oh, my God, all of this is falling apart around me. And, you know, I've lost this and I've lost that and I've lost this and I've lost that. And, and we, you know, I could lose this and I could lose that. If you were just focusing on that well, we wouldn't be sat here now because you'd have lost everything and, and probably been on the streets of Glasgow or something like that. You know, it's, that's the truth. <laughs> Not Glasgow. That's too far away. Edinburgh. Edinburgh is much nicer. Edinburgh. Now, for any of our contingent listening from Glasgow, I love Glasgow. I absolutely love Scotland. Uh, in fact, we were having that conversation between my, uh, me and my wife because my wife's like, I want to go on holiday. I want to go on holiday. I'm like, okay, where in Scotland do you want to go? She went, no, no, I want to get back on a plane. I'm like, nope, nope. For the past 15 years... For anyone that realize, uh, knows me or anything like that, I used to be a cruise director. We've traveled the world. I've, I've, I've flown everywhere. And I'm like, no, no, I'm, I'm Scotland. I want to be in Scotland. I want to go to all the beautiful beaches, cabins, Munro's. Scotland is amazing. I don't ever want to leave Scotland ever again, if I'm honest. But I know there'll come a time where we have to, to leave. Uh, but no, that's, that's something that we've done. So what do you do when you think life is constantly shit, Graham? Um, if I wake up and something happens, I don't let it ruin my day is the truth, no matter how shit it is. And to, to give you an example, um, we're talking probably four years ago now. Um, I got done online by a scam. Um, I was going to buy a new car and it was going to cost a decent chunk of money. And I'd taken a loan out for it and all of that sort of stuff. And six grand went out the window like that. And I got done. And I could have, you know, and I still have to pay off that loan. The bank's not going to say, oh, well, you got done. Don't worry about it. We'll give you the money. It's fine. You know, that's not going to happen. I still have to pay the loan off. Um, so I could have sat there the, the morning and I remember it well. I I'd paid the money the evening before and then the morning after 
things started to tick over in my brain about, hang on a minute, there's something not right about this. And you start to investigate, you start to look at it, and yeah, I've lost the money. And yeah, I phoned the police and the fraud squad and all of that sort of stuff. And they said, mm -hmm, you know, we'll, yeah. we'll register it. But so much is going on, you know, it's unlikely you're going to get a penny back. Yeah. So I could have sat there that morning and thought my life has just crashed to the ground. Yep. Six grand, which is an awful, awful lot of money, has just gone out of the window. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've still got to pay it back. You know, my monthly payments are still going to be go on for the next God knows how many years. I could have sat there with my head in my hands going, I don't have this new car. I've got an old beat up car outside that wasn't running very well. And that's why we needed a new one. And I've just lost six grand. Oh, my God. Life has turned to shite. Yeah, you know, I could have sat there and just thought the world's come to an end. What's the point in carrying on, you know, and, and just let it ruin my day. The choice I made after phoning the police and all of that was to sit there and go, do you know what? This is my responsibility. It's not the person who's ripped me off because I could blame them. You know, clearly they were, you know, excuse my language, but they were assholes. But I'm the one who hasn't looked deep in, deep enough into this. I'm yep. the one who hasn't done the investigation. I'm the one that's transferred money and expected a car to be delivered to me. I'm the one who hasn't done his due diligence and figured out that, hang on a second, I'm going to give a stranger six grand without, you know, anything yep. in return. It's my fault. So I yep. had to sit there and go, do you know what? I can't blame anybody else. I need to take the responsibility. And if I take the responsibility for it, then I have to sit with it and live with it and pay off the loan over the next few years and just get on with life. If I'd have blamed everybody else, I'd have felt crap for the rest of the day, the rest of the week, probably the rest of the loan while I'm paying it off. And even when I paid the last payment, I'd have probably still been sat there going, you know, the bloody ripped me off the and everything else. But the moment I went, do you know what? That's what my responsibility. I did that. I can't do anything about it now. I've given the police the details. I need to move forward and carry on. Otherwise, it's going to you know, take over my life. So Taking you, responsibility is the is. strength. Yes. So holding yourself accountable. See, this is – now we're getting into victim mindset. And we can explain victim mindset. If, you've never, if no one's ever heard that victim mindset, let's, let's slightly discuss locus of control. A big, massive fan of the locus of control about internal and external, which means – and for anyone that's listening, if you, this might trigger you, this might trigger certain things, and hopefully it's a positive trigger, and I mean that sincerely, because once you start realizing and recognizing something, that's when you can start thinking, oh, I can do something about this. So, victim mindset or the internal locus, of, I've said that right, internal locus, external locus of control is external. where you, ex external locus of control, when you are blaming others for how you feel, when you're blaming everything else and you're not taking control of you you start creating the mindset of a victim someone who says well it's not my fault this is not my fault think of like um kids when we were younger and we were scared and we didn't want to get in trouble uh that little bit of, no it wasn't me it wasn't me that that spilt the the, the 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 sugar puffs this morning no i don't know what it was and we create this embellish this story that then becomes a belief believe it or not it was no it wasn't me it was somebody that came in it was my imaginary friend if anyone's got imaginary friends, I'm not saying they're real or not real. You enjoy your life. I'm just saying as an example, <laughs> right? as an example, we're creating a story of we're not in control. And while ever we can keep blaming that person and that person and that person, you're not taking control. So you're allowing yourself to feel and constantly move on. Now, that's the comfort zone that people create. Don't know if you've heard this in the past, but nothing grows in the comfort zone. What we do in that comfort zone, that little safe space that we create, is we create a safe space of sadness, of emotional uh, disturbance, of, of depression, anxiety. It's, uh, and we stay in this comfort zone, which is not a comfy place to be. It's not a comfy place to be in any way whatsoever. Now, the internal locus, locus of control and not being in a victim mindset pretty much start saying actually i'm in charge of me today i'm in charge of my emotions check in with your emotions this comes back to the sausage dealer story from a long time ago graham people are still going to steal your sausage it's what you decide to do with that and look you told you about the car I don't, about six weeks ago i got my tag watch stolen and you're absolutely right i didn't do due diligence in fact at one at one point i did want to punch the guy in the throat but on the second snap in Straight away, I was like, do you know what? I didn't show due diligence. 
I, I was trying to sell my watch so I could pay for something else, but I was like, it was going to be, it'll be a win-win. It was a win-win for the other person. You're absolutely right. Hold yourself accountable. And that gets you away from that victim mindset when you actually start, and it comes from a place of fear. For anyone that's listening, that victim mindset comes from an, an, insecure, an insecure place, and that's monkey mind. If your monkey mind is in control, it will be lashing out. You will not want to be wrong. You'll absolutely say, no, no, I'm right. No, I'm right, and everyone else is wrong. And then you won't hold yourself accountable because your monkey mind is going to, no, no, it's not me. No, it's not my fault. No, no, it's not my fault. No, it was everybody else's fault. And then you you start you stop taking that responsibility. You stop taking that charge. You're 100% right. That's victim mentality and mindset that, that is out there. And you can get out of it. I know we do the four states of consciousness, Graham, and I believe you can. I believe, I've been in every state of consciousness. I've been... No, I haven't. No, I haven't been in the top state of consciousness anyway, because I'll keep checking out for that one. However, I've been down on that lower rung where I blamed everyone else for how I was feeling. That was my state of depression. That was me in depression. Woe is me. Woe is me. We talked about little bitch me in the, in the, in the meeting that we had the other day. Still pops up sometimes. I'm like, ah, no, I'm not going to do that because I know where that goes. And that's, that is a big part of mindset. And it it's not easy because you're scared to start saying, actually, I own this. But once you repeat that pattern of I own this and I own me and it's on me, you actually grow in courage and you can't have courage without having fear. You can't have fear without courage. They go hand in hand. You have to have fear so you can grow courage. Once you start taking the courage to say, do you know what? It was me that sold, the, give the guy 6,000 pounds. Yep, I'm going to look stupid in front of everyone. But do you know what? That's on me. Yep, I gave that tag watch away. Literally, Graham, did I tell you I was taking pictures to make sure I, I didn't? I took pictures of me packaging, and that was the stupidest thing. I mean, I'm laughing now. I didn't want the guy to think I was scamming him, and I'm like, well, it's an expensive watch. So I took pictures so he felt secure that he'd given me money and I hold it again. And I'm taking pictures, and this is the thing when I was taking pictures, I'm like, I hope he doesn't think I'm scamming him. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that's the niceness that we have, right? That's the niceness. But at least, and a boom, when, when I realized I'd, I'd been scammed, and I'm like, it was one of the emails that they sent, Gray, which was the funniest thing, is, don't worry, we've got your money in a safe place. I went, why would you tell me, don't worry? That's that right there, that's a scam. I knew, straight away. You wouldn't say, don't worry. And that's, that to me, I'm laughing now, because the second that email came in, I'm like, I'd, the hardest part was telling my wife I didn't mind about the watch. It was the it was the reaction from the wife. Oh, it wasn't pretty. Graham, I can tell you now. But that's what? locus of control, taking accountability, uh, which is not easy. But once you start doing it more and more and more, you actually grow in courage to a point where you'll say, "Nah, that could be on me. That could be on me. I'll take ownership for that one." <laughs> Yeah. And I think it's it's really important because people will be sitting out there. But well, what if somebody does do something to me? What if, you know, if if somebody at work walks up to me and has a right go at me and calls me names and swears at me and all of that sort of stuff? That's not on me. No, you're right. It's not. What is on you and what is your responsibility is your reaction to that. What other people do, you can't control. That's external of you. You're absolutely right. But what you can control is your reaction to that. You know, if somebody comes up to you, it's a, it's a bit like road rage, isn't it? We hear so much, you know, these days about road rage and, well, I say these days, but for the last God knows how many years, we hear so much about road rage where people get out and they scrap in the streets and you know, people have been killed over it and stabbed and all sorts of stuff over it. If somebody does something to you on the road that cuts you up or that, you know, endangers you in some way, that reaction is yours and yours alone. If you then get out, belt that person in the mouth and they report you to the police and you get done by the police you can't then turn around and say well he cut me up on the road it's his fault no your reaction and therefore the trouble you're getting in is your fault if you got out and smacked somebody in the mouth that's your fault not anybody else's doesn't matter what he's done to you you know i like you could if i'd have come across the person who who had the six grand off me well in the first moment i'd have belted him one absolutely would i but then i suddenly (laughs) realized like you something switches and you go yeah, I really should have done that, 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 and that. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. There's sometimes you, I've made conscious decisions, <laughs> and I mean it. 
And I'm like, no, I think this is this is one of those situations where anger is needed. It is needed. And I've done anger, and I, 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 it's made me feel really good for a good couple of minutes. And then once I've calmed down, I'm like, oh, my God, I can't believe it. But no, I, I, look, we're human beings. At the end of the day, we're human beings. We're going to have these emotions. And I was, we're not robots. We're not robots. We have emotions. That's what makes us so unique as human beings. But what what do when you I know where I was Graham and I know we always come from a place of our experiences and stuff like that but when you see people on a daily basis and the shoulders are down and they're just you can tell they've got that little dark cloud around them they've got that dark cloud around them I'm very sensitive to those kind of things because I know where the way I vibrate and things and I'm like I'm going to move myself away from that person it's kind of hard. So when you see that person with the shoulders down and they don't want to come up, Graham, they don't want to come up, they want to stay where they are. But what is it that, what's creating that constant feeling of life is being shit? I think we get, we all get into patterns. We all have emotional patterns that we go through. And every single emotion we have in our uh, our entire system, whether it's depression or anger or frustration or joy or happiness or whatever, is a pattern that we run. But because we get into patterns, the ones we experience, the ones we practice the most, it's like practicing a skill. It's like practicing kicking a football. The more you do it, the more you get used to it, the easier it becomes. So if people get into that pattern of having that dark cloud, whether you want to call that depression or whatever, we'll use depression as an example. When people get into that pattern of being depressed, of feeling depressed, then that pattern comes easy to them. And it therefore perpetuates. It's a, like a self-fulfilling prophecy. It just perpetuates time and time again. It's really hard for, uh, certainly for me, and I, I would guess that you're the same, but for me, it's really hard to see those people who are in that state that I desperately want to help because we both know how we can help those people because we've both been there. We both know how to break out of that because we've both done it. But if you try and help them and they're not interested they just want to be there because that's even though it feels terrible to be depressed that's their comfort spot they know that they can fulfill their emotional needs through their depression and that's their comfort point feeling great feeling good feeling happy feeling joyful whatever it may be that's fearful because it's changing the pattern of where they are they know that they can feel comfortable and they use comfort in a in a loose term, obviously, but they know that they can feel comfortable by being depressed. Yeah. It might be really uncomfortable in their minds. It might be really uncomfortable to shift between that and happiness or that and joy or that and peace or whatever it may be. There's a fear factor there that stops them doing it, that they might lose something. They might lose that comfort. They might lose the connection they get with other people or the connection they get with themselves through that emotional state, they might lose that by going into a different emotional state. And people do get stuck in that. And genuinely, no matter what they say out loud or even what they say internally, somewhere inside, that is giving them something that they need. And that's the hardest person in the world for me. To me, it's the hardest person in the world because I desperately want to help them. But not everybody wants the help. And that's a really, really hard thing as, as somebody who at his core is a helper, mm -hmm. as at his core wants to see people happy, at his core doesn't want people to be suffering. And if you mm -hmm. want a, a, you know, a definition of somebody who is emotionally suffering, that for me is that person who's stuck in that pattern and is fearful of getting out of it. That's yep. you know, emotionally suffering for me. For me. Yeah, I just find that really hard. You know, when, I don't know about you. When you come across those people, do you find it really hard to to say, you know, okay, uh, look, help? It, I, we've had these conversations before because she, I, look, it's horrible. Hi, David. Welcome to the show. Good evening, uh, David. Hi, David. Um, it's this is a hard one. I I still struggle with this, Graham, because call it the superhero complex, call it the Superman complex, whatever. When I see somebody in pain, you automatically want to go and help. I do. I know I've got that big soft spot and I'll help anyone. 
but you can't help people that don't want help. They're not ready to hear the truth. They have to, like I had to go through my, my upset and my torment. I had to go through it. Didn't break me. Got as horrible as it was at the time I was going through it, made me stronger. So I, I, a lot of the time, the pain that people are going through will make you stronger. It's Once you've been in that horrible pain and that horrible situation of this constant thoughts and just whirling around and just nothing's going right, you don't want anybody else to suffer that pain. But you have to remind you, I do remind myself, do you know what? Didn't break me. It was a horrible part of my, and when I was ready, I was ready. And it was, it was something, my, I told you, it's something that my, my wife said um, that, that, that gave me that little tough love. It was tough love. I don't listen to people's sob stories as much as I used to. I think most people, especially the people around me, know what I'm doing now as a job. So I possibly don't listen to their sob stories. I said, that sounds wrong. Oh, because he doesn't listen to, no, 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 no. That's, no. I listen to people's stories, but, I think if you keep repeating the same story and you're not willing to do something about it, then it's it's not my responsibility. And if I've had two conversations or three conversations with somebody and I'm like, you're still repeating the same thing, it's not going to go away if you keep repeating it. Because people speak in emotion, so whatever's right on their monkey mind just basically comes out. It's like verbal diarrhea sometimes. Yeah. But at one point, and I, I do I say that, at what point are you going to start changing the script? Because if you don't change the script, it's going to carry on. 100% what you're going through is not going to change until you make changes. Um, and it, it, it's, I don't know if it was a Kim Kardashian quote or something. Don't get me wrong. I'm not a follower of the Kim Kardashian or something like that. It was some female, high profile, um, entrepreneurial lady. And I just, I, I looked at the quote and I'm like, if she did say that, fair play. And it was something on the lines, if you keep, talking about something you're looking for attention not salvation it was something like you keep repeating if you mention something three times you're looking for attention not salvation it was something really poignant like that keep repeating it just to tell a story to get that oh bless kind of uh reaction that that is seeking attention it's not always and that's i think that's the fine line that everyone is is when somebody starts keep repeating that program or they keep repeating that story. You think, are oh, they just looking for attention? Are they looking for attention? They're looking for someone to to to, because there is enough help out there. You can walk into the works and pay three pound for life changing books, um, but we choose not to, and sometimes repeat those stories. I don't know if this is a harsh conversation uh, to be having and stuff like that. And it's certainly not a personal opinion, but yes, life I don't think is as shit as what people think it is. I think if you look for solutions instead of the problems, you might start actually moving somewhere. But it's not taught to us, Graham, is it? It's not taught to us. The biggest shock I had in my life was what's in the past has to be let go. When you keep going back to something in the past, it's an anchor and it's stopping you moving forward. You've got to drop the anchor and sail away. Yeah. That's the, literally the only thing that you can do is it's in the past. You can't change it as horrible as some of the absolute atrocities that happen. You can't go back to it. The only ones that keep bringing it back to, to fruition is ourselves by talking about it and looking back into it. You have to let that anchor go to keep moving forward. But it does become that c comfort blanket for people, doesn't it, sometimes? Yeah, it does, absolutely. And um, while you were talking there, that, uh, something came to my mind. You were saying about, I don't think life's as shit as we like to think it is. I... I uh, a quote that came to my mind, and I don't know if I've heard it from somewhere or if it's just decided to appear yeah. in my mind, is life is only as shit as the things you focus on. It's similar to the, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So if you if you are constantly focusing <gasps> on, you know, Ukraine or constantly focusing on the cost of living at the yeah. moment or constantly focusing on COVID or constantly yeah. focusing on how much of an ask your bosses or constantly yeah. focusing on you know your negative real relationship with your kids or with your wife or husband yeah. or whatever if that's what you're constantly focusing on guess what that's how shit life is if you're focusing on what's great in your life if you're focusing on what you can do to make your life better if you're focusing on the sunshine if you're focusing on a beautiful flower outside if you're focusing on your great friendships or your great relationships that's how shit life isn't going to be 
when you focus on the right things, that's when your life changes. To yeah. quote Wayne Dyer, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Yeah. I do you know what it was when you talked about there's an awful lot of shit talk on the, this radio show today. I've just realized <laughs> it was in the title of the show. I don't know if it was you I was talking to, Graham, and I said I was trying to use the art of perspective to, to explain to someone, and it's going to be perfectly formed right now that in a big, beautiful landscape piece of art, beautiful landscape, fields, poppies. Love the yellow flowers. Whatever you want, you look on this beautiful picture of landscape. However, if you look at the dog shitting in the corner and you see the dog in the picture having a, having a poop in the corner and you're only looking at the poop, you're not going to see this big, massive, vast beauty behind it. Absolutely. It's um, it's a bit like this. Um, it's a true story, but for the life of me, the guy's name forget, um, escapes me. During the Vietnam War, uh, two American pilots were shot down on the same day and captured uh, by the Viet Cong and put into um, prisoner of war camps. One of them committed suicide. The other one stayed in captivity for years, came out and carried on being a human, you know, a normal human being. Why? Because one of them, all he saw were the bars and the captivity and the horror, whereas the other one, and they asked him how he survived, he said, I survived by every day I remembered my family. I pictured mm -hmm. them clearly in my head. I pictured my kids playing in the back garden. I pictured my wife. I pictured my parents. And that's what he focused on. One guy focused on the bars and the captivity and everything else and ended up committing suicide in captivity. Mm -hmm. The other one escaped because he was able to survive it by focusing on his family. If somebody in that horror of a situation mm -hmm. can focus on the positive things and come out of it, there's not too many things in life that that we can't do the same with, is there? Um, no, I, I completely agree. I completely agree. Why is it we weren't taught this in school, Graham? Why? Well, now we're not going to touch on politics today because we said we weren't going to touch on politics. Um, so I'm not going to go down that route. However, what I will say ah! is... If we were all taught this, wouldn't we all be a lot more free than we currently are? Oh! That's, that's as far as I'm going with that for today. But I is, feel like I'm talking case. to Kanye West right now. You're dropping some Kanye West knowledge. Kanye West? What do you want me to do? Drop a microphone? <laughs> right. But isn't that isn't that the truth? If we all knew how to be more free in our mind, if we all knew how to set up our own positive, empowering beliefs, if we all knew how to figure out our own values, our own core identity, who we are, if we all knew how to have a positive, empowering, free mindset, would we be as trapped into the, the world that we're in? Or would we be more free as human beings? Would we put up with all the stuff that goes on around us? <laughs> basis quite as much i don't know who you know i'm it's not for me to say it's not for Graham you know I, can, I have my own thoughts and opinions and and everybody out there has their own it's not for me to say but that's my thoughts and opinions if we were taught that in school would we be quite as trapped into this life as we currently are or would we be more free there you go cuddy i'll answer your question with a question would we be more free I want David to jump in on this one. David's tuned in. I want David to jump in with a question because I think that was very Matrixy, Graham. That was very Matrixy. I was like, ho, 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 ho. Uh, is Graham Nichols wanting to escape the uh, the Matrix? I think that was a fantastic. Yeah, well, just call me Neo. Oh, absolutely <laughs> brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. So as life is getting I see. I don't agree that life's getting tougher. I don't. I know that you mentioned what's the point in carrying on. See, I heard you say that earlier. See, that was not that you were saying what's the point in carrying on, but if you keep repeating, and for a lot of our uh, listeners, to, to explain the actual, the meat, the, the actually the, the premise of the show, the meanings of life, was to talk about the meanings that we create. So. If you are the kind of person that wakes up, and I'll explain, we, we can explain what you're doing, is your brain is wired to do a lot of things. 
first of all, it's very lazy. It wants easy solutions because it's doing so much. It's actually really just, it's like, oh, I'll just get rid of that. I'll get rid of that. Get rid of that. To the point of, and I love this. I got this. I love this fact. Sometimes your brain wants to just find you an easy partner. So it will even match. It will even match initials sometimes just by picking up the initials of the person that you've met. If they're similar or close to yours, your brain can go, that's a match. Just take that because it's doing so much. It doesn't want to overcomplicate the amount of things that it's doing. Believe it or not, when I found that fact out, I was like, well, that, that, can't, be, that can't be true. Until I, until I found out what my wife, I went, I was like, well, what's, my, what's, what's Carol's name? So I'm Cuddy Cudworth. Uh, and now she's Carol Cudworth, CC and CC. I was like, no, no, that's why me and my wife met. Our brains both went, yeah, you'll do. You're kind of similar in names. You're kind of similar in names. That's your match. There's no, <laughs> anyway, your brain's got a negativity bias as well. They always talk about the negativity bias. It has to remember what causes it pain. And then the third part of it is the questions you ask. The questions you ask create the meaning. So if you ask a question, why is everything shit? Your brain has to answer that question. And your monkey mind will jump in as well. And it'll say, well, your life is shit because you did this, 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 and this. Then you jump onto the next question. Well, why did I do this? Because you this, 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 and this. That that internal chimp talk, that, 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 that monkey talk that we have, that, 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 that the coding that we have, if it's not positive you will absolutely think that life is constantly shit. True or false? It's absolutely true. The, your brain will absolutely answer any question in the tone that you ask it. If you ask it a negative, disempowering question, you are going to get a negative, disempowering answer. If you ask it a positive, empowering question, you're going to get that type of answer. If you ask why is life so shit, your brain's going to tell you why life's so shit. It really is. <laughs> On the other hand, if you ask the question, how can I make life better and not be so shit? Your brain's going to give you a lot better answer. It's going to give you solutions. And we started this show by saying that you the, the answer to your problems is never in the problem itself. It's in the solution. So if yeah. you ask your brain for a solution, that's you're going to get solutions for how to move forward. That's what you've been doing for the last two years. You haven't yes. been asking, why has this happened to me? Why is this no. going on? Why this? Why that? What you've been asking is, how can I? How can I get out of this? How can I make this better? Yeah. How can I, you know, all of that sort of stuff. That's the change you've made. Uh, or sorry, not the change you've made, but the way you've dealt with everything that's gone mm -hmm. on and, and everything that was going on around you. That's how you've made that. And that's what people have got to do. While you were talking, I was looking at my notes here for a, for a course that, I'm, uh, that I've just released. Uh, there are, you know, there are three questions that our minds ask constantly. And those three questions, if you can answer those three questions and therefore stop your mind asking them and trying to search for answers, then you will increase your levels of focus by somewhere in the region of 75%. Oh, I'm interested. Oh, I'm interested. So you, the three questions your brain always asks are, what should I focus on? What does that mean? And what will I do? So if you can decide what you're going to focus on, what it means to focus on that and what you're going to do about it, guess what? All that energy of your mind constantly asking those questions isn't taken up. So if you can ask, answer the question, what will I focus on? And you choose to focus on either the solutions or what's great in life or something along those lines. If you choose the meaning, therefore, that I'm going to find a solution or that life's good or that life's getting better every day. And if you choose to, the things you choose to do are towards that solution or to, towards life getting better every day, Guess what's going to happen? Life's not going to feel so shit. And when life turns to that word that we've said far too many times, if you can switch, though, if you can find the answer to those three questions in a positive way, then that's not going to happen. When you know, when somebody adds your tag watch away, you could have focus. You could have said, "What will I focus on? I'll focus on that person being a complete and utter bleeping bleep bleep." What yep. does it mean? It means he's a bleep bleep and he's ripped me off the bleeping bleep bleep. Yep. What am I going to do about it? I'm going to go and find him and beat the bejesus out of him. I did you that for an hour. That. Don't get me wrong. I did that for an Absolutely. hour. I allowed myself did. some worry time. Yeah, you, 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 Things like that, you're going to get frustrated for a while. I get that. But 
you could have let that go across your, your whole day, your whole week, your whole month, because that's a big thing to lose. But instead, you switched to, what am I going to focus on? Okay, I was a bit of a burke, and you know, I didn't do my due diligence. I didn't do that. What does it mean? It means I'm a bit of a burke, and I'll know differently in future that I'm yes. not going to get ripped off. <laughs> and what am I going to do about it? I'm going to hold my hands up, tell my wife, take the beating that she's going to give me. Oh, it was a big then, beating. And I'm sure it was. You know, when I told my wife that we'd lost the money over the car, gee, huh, whoo, it's like a nuclear bomb. I'm surprised, surprised you didn't see the mushroom pad from Scotland. Um, but, you know, I, what am I going to do about it? I'm going to hold my hands up and say, do you know what? I'm going to take responsibility for it. I should have done better. And I answered those three questions completely differently. So what am I going to focus on? What does it mean? What am I going to do? If you can answer those three questions, the energy coming from your mind that's constantly trying to answer those questions, if you can answer it for it, your energy level is going to go up and you're going to go in a positive direction as long as you answer the positive, of course. So, yes. yes. I like that. Um, do you know, while you were talking, I wanted to know what your wife's name was. Paula. Paula. I knew I was thinking it was Pam. So Paula Nichols, Graham Nichols. Yeah. yeah. G and P are quite similar. Yeah. Uh, as you were saying that about uh, Carol and all that sort of stuff, the one thing that came to my mind is my wife's middle name is Jane and my mum's name is Jane. Oh, there, there you, you go. go. There's a link. Because your, your brain, yep, yeah, your brain. I, I think that was a Darren Brown thing. It was Darren Brown's audio book. And he was like, you know, your brain's doing so much. It actually is just constantly throwing everything it's taking in, even like the touch of the, the the foot against the floor right now, there's a sensation your brain's taking that in. But it just it's like, delete, delete, delete. delete. I'm just going to push that. Yeah, I'm just going to delete it. I don't need that information. That's not going to cost me my life. Your brain's purpose is to keep you alive. But when it was it just one, so, and also you like people, your brain likes things that's like him or it. Yeah. And it will, when you're interviewing people and things like that, if you, if there's something in them that you like, it's probably something you like about yourself and you'll probably get employed because of that. Yeah, people like people who like themselves. Absolutely. And I did, I, I did find that fascinating. Was like, it's just your brain's lazy. It's actually because it's, it's a supercomputer. So anything it doesn't have to deal with, one less thing it can deal with, one less decision it has to make, it'll do it. So I love yep. that reference that your brain is lazy. Um, but I did I did like that. I always thought that was quite fascinating. So what's the new course then, Graham? I know we've got plenty of, plenty of minutes left and we're going to keep talking about these things. But I'm intrigued in the new course already. Yeah, the new course is about uh, time management mastery. Um, I, the way I always look at it is time is a human construct. We put time together. Yes, day turns into night and night turns into day, but we're the ones that said, okay, we're going to make that 24 hours and, and each of those hours is going to have 60 minutes and each of those minutes has 60 seconds and all of that sort of stuff. So if we can construct time, then surely we can manage our time more effectively. And that's what it's all about. It's, uh, but it's not just in a business perspective, it's in a life perspective because we can all get so busy that the, um, the important things in life can go missing. So, you know, quality time with your family, can go missing because you're working so much or because there's so much else on or you're worrying about stuff with you know quality time with your family or with your kids or doing the things you want to do reading a book or going for a bike ride or taking on a hobby we can all get lost in that so it really is about the course really is about creating the time of your life uh, and, and managing your time effectively so that you can do the things that you should do and not oh i'm laughing i'm that. laughing the second you said time of a life i'm thinking dirty dancing i could get dirty dancing out of my head oh God. Time of oh. my life. <laughs> oh, it's a good job my daughter's not watching. My daughter is obsessed by that movie. She really is. What should what? we watch, like, Ariane? Day dancing? No, not oh. for the hundred and thirty seventh time. Oh, anyway. that's hilarious. That's hilarious. So, and I hear, I hear rumor, Cuddy, that you might have a course coming out shortly as well. Why don't you just tell us a little bit about that? So I'm I'm passionate about making sure that people have access to everything that they need. And there's different levels that you can work with me. I'm always very honest. You can work in a group, in a group coaching kind of uh, setting where there's like 10 people in a group thing and we teach things. We teach you mindset. We teach you how to master your emotions, how to change the questions, create different meanings and things like that. 
but a lot of that, that takes time. Believe it or not, that takes time, and a lot of people um, they, it's, they don't want to give away one night a week for six weeks to create that mindset and make those changes. Sometimes, and a lot of people, and I, I do like video courses because I can do that in my own time. I can learn at my own time. So yes, I have created a video course. The video course is called "Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life." And that's a bold statement. And it's funny because whenever I say, I told one of my friends, oh, I'm, I'm creating a course called Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life. We can't do that. That was literally the reason but we can't do that. <laughs> actually, actually you, you can. One of those conversations, Graham, right? You, you, one of those conversations. Clearly, somebody doesn't want to change in their life. Not a problem. I, I'd left that one well alone. To the point of, he, he actually said, well, can you make me not think that going to work? shit i went absolutely i can i said but it wouldn't be me that would do it, it would be you i would just reframe it well what do you mean by reframing i said well just reframe it what positive do you get from doing that because then you're doing it for the positive reason you're not doing it for the the humdrum reason and then he was like oh that's just stupid i said not a problem you carry on living your best life still miserable at work by the way still miserable yeah, absolutely at work. um and the power of reframing when i found reframing i did i used and i used to use reframing was I never liked a certain part of my job. It just brought me pure dread. But I did that. I reframed it to, well, if I go and be good at that, it was the safety aspect of the job, I'll get noticed by the upper management and then I'll get the promotion. So I'm making something that I really didn't do. And I actually made that into one of my favorite parts of the job. And I did get noticed for the promotion. Instead of going in, oh, I don't like this. So I reframed it, completely reframed it, a cognitive reframe from NLP or CBT. Love that. Um, and I, 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 that's how I started doing it. But I, I do laugh because I think it's difficult to change someone's per perception. Now, David, right. I love the word. One of my titles for the course is The Art of Perspective. Beautiful title, The Art of Perspective. It's not for us to change. And David, I don't know. I don't know what job you do, David. I don't know if you're here to learn about yourself and things like that. I don't know if you're a, a coach or a therapist yourself. David, it's difficult to change someone's perception or perspective. You are 100%, but it's not our responsibility to change somebody else's. Oh, I think you feel, I felt, I think you filled with joy a little bit there, Graham. Gra gra like, oh, could he's learning? Could he's learning? <laughs> it's not our responsibility as a coach or a th therapist to go around changing other people's perspective. People have to come to you and say, right, I'm struggling with this. How, how can we get through it? Let's work on changing perspective. But it is difficult. It's it's not difficult when you ask for it, though. No. I would I would suggest how I would put it is it's impossible for you to change somebody else's perspective unless they want to change it first. Um, Correct. And it's a conversation that, that we've always had that you can only help people as coaches, therapists, whatever you want to call yourself, you can only help people who actually want the help. Now, if somebody comes to you and they don't want the help, they're coming because their wife sent them or their husband sent them or, you know, their work sent them or they just feel like they should, but they don't actually want to change, then they're never going to change unless they have the desire. Absolutely. If you've got if the desire, the I had, desire yep. then, you, then you can absolutely help them to do that, but they still have to make the change. But you cannot change anybody who doesn't want to change. You know, nope. there's no, you just can't do it nope. because even if you, you know, you know, in NLP, there's some great tools for conversational change, all that sort of stuff. And even if you help them in the moment and they think, you know, it's kind of making a shift, if they don't actually want to make that change, it just won't stick. No. Nope. And that's the truth. It will just, the pattern will repeat, go back to repeating. It's yeah. only if people actually want the help. And that really is, it really brings us nicely back to the title of, of today's chat about when life's turning to shit, if you don't want life to be any other way, that's exactly what life will be. If you don't want to make the change, if you're not willing to do the work to make the, make the change, that's exactly what you're going to experience on a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly basis. On the yeah. other hand, if you want to make the change and you look for how to make the change and you seek the solutions, and even if you get help from somebody like myself or Cuddy, then you can make the change but unless you absolutely want to you can't and that's the yeah. truth of it and a lot of people will stay in their their life full of poo 
because that's what they're choosing <laughs> to do. Even if they say they're not, they are because they're not willing to make do the work to make the change. And it's not easy. It's not simple. It was horrendous for me to get out of being, you know, with stress, depression and anxiety. Horrendous. It took me a long time, a lot of pain, a lot of soul searching, a lot of inner growth. And that's some of the worst pain you'll ever experience. It took me a long time to do that work. And to be honest, the work is still going on these days. I still work on myself. Mm -hmm. And it's painful some days. It's painful when you have to grow. But it depends what you want. Do you want life to be filled with poo? Do you want to sit on a poo potty? I, I don't know why you're saying poo you so much. You've said the other word for the most <laughs> yeah. of the show. Well, so why it. for the last the five minutes? <laughs> I just thought, you know, just bring the index down a bit in case, you know, Facebook or YouTube are going, hang on a second here. There's a lot of swearing going on in that one. Um, so and that's the truth, though. You, you know, and I'm sure that's your perspective as well, Cody. When you were feeling that way, when you were feeling depressed and that, mm. to get out of that, that was painful, right? It's not the, it's not an easy fix, is it? It's exhausting. It, it, oh, great word for it. Absolutely, it is exhausting. It's exhausting. Taking that jacket of depression off is exhausting. Yeah, and then that's heavy, why, right? and that's it, it weighs so heavy. And it's 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 like going to the gym. You're not going to see the effects on one day of make, making change. You're not losing weight. It's the same thing. You're not going to see the weight loss. You've got to do it for three months, four months, five months. You have to accept that life is going to carry on being shit at least for a good three weeks before you even start making changes. But you, the fact that you're making changes is, is, is the really important part. And that's where the joy and the consistency comes from. Consistency, consistency and repetition is the mother of all skill. I wonder where I got that from, Graham. Repetition yeah, is the know, mother of all skill. Repetition is the mother of all skill, and and um, practice is the father. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's oh, very good. Well, anyway, believe it or not, fifty-seven minutes have flown by yet again. I don't know where this time goes. I truly don't. We get into our conversations and all of a sudden it's gone. So with just a couple of minutes left, Cuddy, tell everybody about Cuddy Cudworth, the, the UK's number one mind management coach, and where they can get in touch with you. You are more than welcome to sneak into my DMs. Uh, find the Monkey Mind Relaxation Carrie's Facebook in. Sorry, group. Carrie's just jumped in. Carrie's just jumped in. Hi, Carrie. Carrie! She was on the show last week. I had her on as a guest. She was lovely. Yes. Lovely guest. Hi, Carrie. Um, anyway, and you can find Carrie on TikTok. Saying. No, it's not. No, let's get <laughs> Carrie involved. And if you stop doing the work even after it's better, you return to where you were. Yes, Carrie, you're absolutely right. That's the same as losing weight. In fact, my wife always says the hardest part about losing weight is not losing the weight. It's keeping it off. Yeah, absolutely. It's keeping it off. Yeah. That's the hard part. And that's the exact same it's 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 exhausting once you get get lose depression because you'll I, I notice when my depression is coming back on or sometimes I don't and I'm like ah caught me out my little monkey mind's very sneaky very sneaky yeah. indeed uh yeah so yeah you can find the Facebook group you can get in there I've not been as vocal in the Facebook group recently because I've been busy creating the video course it's took hours as well you know Grim how you do them in such a quick time I've got no idea it's took me two and a half months to create this course um so yeah you can experience. check it out. <laughs> oh, I know. How long did you start of interest, Graham? How long did it take you to do your first course? Uh, months, literally months. months. And it's a, it's a really short, really short course as well. So uh, yeah, months. But uh, oh, I get a lot quicker with, with experience. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, join the Facebook group or just get in contact. Send me an email on monkeymindrelaxation at gmail dot com. You're more than welcome to. Um, I do think it's funny when you ask me what my email address is, Graham. I'm like, you should know by now. Monkey know mind relaxation now, at Gmail. <laughs> yep, so that's how you can get in contact. You've got one minute left, Graham. How can we get in contact with you? Uh, simply go to www.thepriorityacademy.com. On there, you'll find all of my courses. There are courses if you want to be a coach or a complimentary therapist, or there are some self-help help courses as well, which you can dive into if you just want to help yourself have more confidence or uh, stop stressing or anything like that. You can dive in and get them as well. Cuddy, as always, it's been an absolute pleasure, my friend. Thank you so much for, for joining in the conversation and being part of that. Thank you to everybody who's watching. Thanks, David, and thanks, Carrie, for your comments. 
we'll be back in two weeks' time to uh, to discuss two weeks something time. else. Two Absolutely, weeks time. and you're back next week, right? No, I've got to, I'm I've no Ooh, I've got, got a week to, off. No, I've got a week off. I always have one one wow. Sunday, one Thursday. I've, I've I've I'm doing meditation at a workplace. Actually, believe it or not, I've got booked oh. in for doing meditation. Bye, All right, folks. See you again in two weeks' time. Thank you very.